The movie begins with a rich businessman named Chris Decker talking to his beautiful wife, Jamie, on a video call about signing divorce papers. Jamie requests him to sign the papers, but Chris starts to regret his decision and wishes he had fought harder to save their marriage. However, Jamie encourages him to move on. After the call, she puts their daughter Willow to bed, and the latter tells her how much she misses her dad. Jamie tries to comfort her by saying she misses him too. In the next scene, Chris goes to a supermarket to buy ice cream. There, while roaming around, he meets a pretty woman named Skye, who asks for his opinion about a brand of wine she wants to buy. Skye tells him that she had a tough day, and Chris suggests a wine called Nebbiolo to cheer her up. They introduce themselves and then part ways. Coincidentally, outside the store, Chris sees her again, upset, because her Uber ride got cancelled. After learning about the situation, he offers to give her a free ride to her apartment, and she agrees. During the ride, Skye tells Chris that she had a fight with her roommate and doesn't want to stay with her. Using this opportunity, Chris tells her that he lives alone and suggests she stay at his house instead. Unknown to them, the owner of Skye's apartment, Ronald, watches them from his window as the two drive away. Moments later, they enter Chris's luxurious home and Skye asks if it all belongs to him. Chris nods his head and tells her that he used to make computer security software and earned a lot of money through it. Hearing this, Skye also reveals that she used to be a model but moved to the countryside for a more fulfilling life and now works as a waitress in a bar. As the night goes on, Chris and Skye have drinks by the fireplace and feel a connection. They end up kissing passionately and spending the night together. The next morning, Chris wakes up alone and Skye returns to her apartment. Her roommate Lisa, who appears to be worried, inquires about her whereabouts from last night. However, Skye completely ignores her and goes to her room. Meanwhile, Chris thinks about his daughter, Willow, and remembers the happy times they had together. Feeling lonely, he decides to visit the bar where Skye works for a drink. They talk and Chris admits that he only came to see her because his wife wanted him to move on. This surprises Skye, but they keep talking even after her work shift ends for the day. Skye confesses that she made up the story about having a family and actually grew up in a foster home. In response, Chris comforts Skye telling her about the problems in his own family caused by his obsession with security. Suddenly, their conversation is interrupted when he notices a man named Kirju trying to break into his car. Chris tries to intervene, but Kirju attacks him with a crowbar and runs away. Fortunately, Skye arrives at the scene and takes him to the hospital. The following morning, we see Chris in a wheelchair with a plaster on his leg. Skye brings him to his home and helps him to sit on the couch. Since Chris has hired a private nurse who hasn't arrived there yet, Skye offers to take care of him. Playfully, Chris asks about her qualifications, and she jokingly suggests that she can do what his private nurse can't. Chris agrees and cancels the nurse appointment. He also suggests she move in permanently with him and trusts her with his home security passcodes. Hearing this, Skye becomes happy and immediately heads to her apartment to get her belongings. On arriving, Ronald confronts her and mentions that Lisa was doing well before she came into her life. Now, she is always angry and depressed. However, Lisa tells him to be quiet and invites Skye to sit on the bed. The two then kiss and Skye promises to visit her frequently. She then packs her belongings and walks out of the apartment. As the days pass, Chris is very happy to have Skye look after him and enjoys each and every moment with her. As a result, he starts ignoring his family and doesn't respond to their messages. One morning, as the girls have exceeded the rent due by more than two weeks, Ronald demands the payment from Lisa, banging on her door. When there's no response, he forcefully enters the room and looks around the house. To his shock, he finds Lisa's lifeless body in a bathtub filled with blood with cuts on her wrists. He then immediately calls the cops to investigate the matter. Later, Detective Lane arrives at the scene and questions Ronald about Lisa's death, suspecting foul play. Ronald believes she took her own life after Skye left her feeling depressed. However, the detective is skeptical since he can't find any information about a woman named Skye in the records. In the next scene, Jamie video calls Chris and inquires about their divorce papers. Sadly, the latter explains that he can't deal with them at the moment due to his leg injury. Jamie suggests having their daughter Willow visit to help cheer him up, and Chris agrees. At the same time, Jamie is surprised to know that Chris has hired a private nurse to look after him, as she knows about his trust issues. After the call, curiosity and mistrust get the better of Chris, and he starts snooping around when he can't find Skye. He then discovers her bag on the couch and decides to check it. Inside, he finds a photo of Skye with Lisa. Skye, who is taking a shower at the moment, notices him and immediately rushes out wrapping a towel around her waist. Surprised to see her in front, Chris admits to what he was doing, and Skye reacts with a smile, saying she would have done the same. She playfully throws her towel at him, 
and they engage in a wild, steamy encounter on the bed. At night, Skye goes into Willow's old room, sings a lullaby, and goes to sleep. The next morning, Chris wakes up panicked and searches for his missing phone. It turns out the phone has all the important passcodes and is integrated with the security system of the whole house. He also checks his tablet, but sadly, it doesn't work. As Chris walks around the house, he comes across the television, which reports about Lisa's mysterious death. He recognizes Lisa as the girl from the photo with Skye, but before he can react, Skye arrives home, bringing him breakfast from the market. As soon as she enters the house, Chris mentions the news and suggests contacting the police to find the culprit. But to his shock, Skye admits to murdering Lisa, casually commenting on the taste of the chicken. She reveals that Lisa was nosy and jealous, and that she stayed at the apartment with her only to spy on Chris through a telescope. She studied him for two months to learn about his daily schedule before approaching him in the supermarket. Chris is devastated by this revelation and yells at Skye to leave his property. Unfazed, Skye smiles at him and locks the doors using Chris's phone, trapping him inside with her. The poor guy pleads for his phone, but Skye tases him, causing him to fall to the floor. Unable to escape due to his injured leg, Chris gets tased again and eventually loses consciousness. Back at the apartment, Ronald is cleaning Lisa's room when he discovers the telescope that Sky used to spy on Chris. Intrigued, he decides to use it to observe the neighboring houses. To his delight, he spots an undressed woman doing yoga. Elsewhere, Sky ties Chris to a wheelchair and demands his security codes for bank accounts. When the latter refuses, she kicks him to the floor and tortures him with an electric drill making a hole in his injured leg. After a while, Ronald adjusts the telescope and inadvertently peeks at Skye, getting dressed after torturing Chris. He is surprised to see her there. Skye, on the other hand, cheerfully transfers Chris's money to her account. The next morning, Chris is in a lot of pain, while Ronald watches Skye fix him up and make him presentable for bankers and brokers. Chris attempts to escape and even tries to choke Skye, but she retaliates by stabbing him in the chest with scissors, threatening to harm his family if he doesn't cooperate. She confiscates all his gadgets and disconnects the security system. Eventually, Chris notices a couple of people arriving in front of his house, giving him a glimmer of hope. Unfortunately, all his hopes are crushed when he sees Kirju. Sky explains that Kirju has been with her since the beginning of the plan. The duo then begin collecting precious items from the house to sell them in the black market. In the next scene, Ronald waits in his car while Sky drives away from the house, leaving Chris with duct tape on his mouth. Thinking it's safe, Ronald breaks a window and enters, where he discovers Chris wounded and bound in the wheelchair. To his bad luck, Sky spots him on the security camera using Chris's phone. Ronald takes his time criticizing Chris for his wealth before removing the duct tape from his mouth. Chris pleads with him to call the police, but Ronald prioritizes his own interests and asks Chris to give him something valuable first. Chris desperately offers his Picasso painting and Ronald drops a bombshell by revealing he doesn't own a phone due to concerns about brain cancer. After a while, Skye returns home to finish off loose ends. Seeing her, Ronald quickly grabs a knife and runs upstairs, clutching the painting. Undeterred, Skye ominously smiles at Chris and appears on the house monitor, armed with a samurai blade. She then follows Ronald's movements through the house. This gives Chris the perfect opportunity, so he breaks free from his restraints. He then hops onto a snowmobile while Ronald's painful voice echoes in the background. He is brutally stabbed by the psychotic woman. Unfortunately, Chris soon loses balance and falls onto the road, narrowly avoiding being hit by a car. The driver, Sebastian, helps him get into his car and assures him that no one is following him. Sebastian then drives around while Chris instructs him to call 911. The former dials the number and contacts the police, passing the phone to Chris so he can explain his situation. However, when they arrive at their destination, Chris is shocked and horrified to realize Sebastian has brought him back to his house. The driver then knocks him unconscious and steps out of the car to meet Skye. Together, they bring Chris inside, with Sebastian taunting him about his apparent helplessness. After a while, Skye leaves them alone, allowing Sebastian to introduce himself as her stepfather. He boasts about how people like Chris are taken advantage of by people like himself, claiming credit for nurturing and training Skye's skills of deception. Sebastian implies that Chris doesn't acquire his wealth solely through his intelligence, pointing out the stark contrast between his protected life and the struggling people below him. However, Chris remains unfazed and calmly states that he doesn't look down on anyone except Sebastian. He rejects Sebastian's attempt to turn the situation into a socio-political argument, acknowledging that both he and Skye 
are robbers and killers. That night, Chris's heart breaks further as he listens to the disturbing sounds of Skye and Sebastian's intimate encounters. Later, Skye approaches Chris and mentions that she had to satisfy her desires. Much to his disgust, she displays a hint of pity, admitting that she will miss the life they had together. In response, Chris dismisses her words and questions if Skye is her real name. He asserts that she didn't have to take everything from him. He would have given it willingly. Hearing this, Skye accuses Chris of being a liar and reveals that she knows about the vast fortune he has hidden in the bank. She then brings him to Sebastian, explaining that they need his thumbprint to access the money. In a gruesome act, they sever his thumb, causing Chris to scream in agony. The following morning, as discussed, Jamie arrives at Chris's house to drop off Willow. The little girl quickly runs to her room, while her mother becomes alarmed by the mess and bloodstains around the house. Right then, Skye casually walks in with Willow in her arms. She suggests they come back later, as Chris is still asleep. However, Jamie does not comply and threatens to call the police. Things get worse when Sebastian joins them. Afterward, the mother-daughter duo find themselves locked in a room with an injured Chris, who screams upon seeing his daughter. Meanwhile, Sebastian attaches Chris's detached thumb to his finger to proceed with their plan of accessing Chris's remaining assets from the locker. Luckily, after Sebastian and Skye leave, Chris and his family manage to find a way to escape by having Willow crawl through a vent to open the door. At the bank, Sebastian uses the attached finger on Chris's locker, and it successfully works. After some time, Jamie asks Chris about where Skye and the other guy had gone, and the latter opens up to her about the assets in his locker. In response, Jamie shockingly confesses that she has hidden Chris's assets from the locker out of fear that he wouldn't provide her with financial assistance. Meanwhile, Sebastian and Skye become furious when they discover Jamie's letter inside the locker instead of the assets. Enraged, they quickly drive back to the house to confront the family. Willow unlocks the security door, but at the same time, Sebastian and Skye arrive at the house. They split up in search, and suddenly, Chris emerges from his hiding spot and nearly strikes Sebastian with his weapon. But sadly, the evil guy fights back and easily overpowers him. When Chris falls to the floor, Sebastian viciously beats him up. Skye also arrives there and points her gun at Chris, demanding to know Jamie's whereabouts. Things get heated between the rubbers when Sebastian yells at Skye to shoot Chris and eliminate him. However, in a shocking turn of events, she shoots him instead, shutting his mouth once and for all. In the midst of this, Chris takes advantage of the situation and stabs Skye in the shoulder before grabbing his phone and hiding from her. Despite the wound, Skye removes the weapon from her shoulder and laughs through the pain. She retrieves her gun and continues hunting the family within the house. Chris uses his phone to distract her with loud orchestral music playing in the background. He also turns off the lights and monitors her movements through his phone. But despite all this, Skye silently moves through the halls while Jamie and Willow hide in fear. Shortly after this, Skye taunts Chris and fires her gun randomly. In response to the loud noises, she has lost all her senses at this point. Suddenly, Chris surprises her and attempts to restrain her, but he gets overpowered and stabbed in the chest. He stumbles in pain, but before Skye can hurt him further, Jamie intervenes and tries to save him. The two women struggle, with Skye eventually overpowering Jamie and injuring her feet. To everyone's surprise, before Skye can land a final blow on Jamie, Willow fires the gun, causing Skye to collapse to the ground. Although shocked, Jamie rushes towards her daughter and embraces her. As Skye lies dying, she desperately tries to say something to Chris. Police sirens can be heard outside, and Jamie quickly leaves with Willow. In the last scene, Chris crawls away from Skye in desperation when he hears her final words, Margaret. He realizes that Margaret is Skye's real name. With a tear falling from her lifeless eyes, she has finally spoken something truthful, and with this, the movie comes to an end.